Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> All right, just sharing this around. Hello, Lion Kamini. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I hope everybody had a wonderful Easter. I do. Give me one second. I am just, um, I am sharing this. All right, that is done. Hi, Donna. How are you? Again, I hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful uh, Easter. Um, <clears throat> I know that um, we did. Uh, normally, uh, after church in the morning, I am actually working normally. And I tell you, God just blessed us. We had a really great week. Um, and, uh, the money was there for us to take off. So we kind of just chilled, uh, a little bit at, uh, home and I fixed, uh, uh, a grilled steak salad, which was awesome. And a strawberry shortcake, which we didn't actually cut into until last night <laughs> because we were so full from the salad. So it was really, really good. The message by Pastor Mike was good. Um, really made you think. He talked about uh, brokenness and he talked about how sometimes uh, the blessing comes in the brokenness. We can't see it at the time, but uh, I'm a true believer in that because there has been so much uh, brokenness uh, in my life in particular that, you know what, you wonder sometimes how you're going to get back up. And uh, I've always been a fan of the fact that that God can use anything. He can use anything. Um, I think he is sad with us when bad things happen. Um, I think he is sad with us, frustrated with us, um, when we can't exactly figure something out. But what I do know is that there's very little that I've ever seen that's happened that's been bad to me that God has not been able to... Um, that God hasn't been able to use. And sometimes he doesn't use it in the moment. Sometimes it is years later, y'all. Years later. But um, he uses it. Sometimes he uses it not in your life. But maybe he uses it to help in somebody else's life. Um, sometimes you are a blessing through what has happened to you to other people. So, I mean... It, it's definitely something to think about. Hi, Sue Ann. Sue Ann says, praise report. Got to spend time with my oldest son. I chose open adoption on his birthday for the first time in 17 years. Oh, Sue Ann, that's amazing. That is so great. Oh, I bet that was just a wonderful reunion. I bet it was, but there was so much to talk about. Oh, that's fabulous. Good for you. Good for you. Okay, guys. Um, so if you have any prayer requests, feel free to drop them in the comments if you would like to. Um, Lee and I love to pray for um, people. Um, I have found out through the years that praying for people a lot of times takes my uh, concentration off anything that's going on with me, which is cool. You know, you don't want to think about your own problems sometimes, but if I can... Pray for other people in the situations they are in. Um, sometimes it also makes me appreciate um, my path um, because you realize very quickly that other people have got a path that is much rockier than yours. So uh, we, we like praying for you. Um, I am going to ask if you guys will pray for uh, our niece, Emmy. Emmy is just a little thing. She's actually our great niece. Um, she recently had her tonsils out and there have been, um, there have been all kinds of something going on. First of all, she got strep throat, which is weird almost immediately 
after the tonsils were removed, but she was in the playroom with her daddy um, last night and she started throwing up and it was nothing but blood. Um, <clears throat> they've got her now at a, uh, a hospital where they're trying to figure out what's going on. So if you guys could just pray for Emmy that they will figure out what's going on. Okay, please. Um, with her, um, <coughs> we know that God's aware and, um, I'm sure they're going to figure it out. Um, and pray for the parents too, because this is a hard time. They, uh, Michaela just had, um, little Kensley, uh, just gosh, a month ago, maybe. And, um, so they're dealing with a new baby and, um, now, Michaela has been sick too and and I mean you know what they say when it rains it pours right and so they're 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 uh they're struggling but they know God's got this so if y'all could pray that would be great Giselle says needs prayer um for Al urgent going to the emergency with possible blood clot oh absolutely Giselle we will pray Donna says continued healing for my father-in-law from a brain bleed oh yeah definitely we will we will definitely keep him in our prayers too. Um, and if you come in and I don't see these during this this little thing here, don't worry. We go back, we we pray over these, and and look, you should be praying too, right? Um, sometimes it's 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 easy to drop to our knees and pray and ask God for what we want, right? And um, in the midst of whatever happens. The one thing I have learned is I have learned how to thank God for what he's answered. Even if he hasn't answered it the way that I was asking him to answer it, which doesn't always happen, right? <clears throat> Sometimes he sees a whole different plan in something. And it is a, it's a necessity for me to know that, look, everybody likes to hear thank you. And I think that when prayers are answered and God comes through or he puts you in the right place for things to happen when you walk through those doors, I think that it is a uh, great moment, a great moment to just thank him in the storm sometimes. You know, sometimes my prayer anymore is, God, you know what we're going through. And, you know, I just thank you for seeing me through this storm, for, for walking with me, for holding my hand, for <clears throat> letting me realize I'm going to get through this storm one way or another. Um, so, so just um, don't forget, you know, my mom always taught me, please and thank you. And I think that, we forget that sometimes that when we are in such a relief that something is better in life or that a, a prayer has been answered or a child is better or whatever that looks like that we forget to say thank you god for keeping us in the palm of your hand so i hope that um i hope that that's a thought um nobody wants to be rude right so don't don't forget to thank him for sure um Please pray for my grandpa, Bob. He finds out today if he broke his foot. Uh, breaks are not easy. Can I tell you? Not when you get older either. I mean, I am still recovering from my arm being broke. It is so much better, and I am so thankful for that. But, um, man, when you break something, you get older. It's never easy, no matter what age you are. But I got to tell you, when you get older, it's really not easy. So we will definitely pray for Grandpa Bob, for sure. Um, yes, we will. Um, today... I'm going to start with The Chosen. This is um, a really good uh, devotion. We didn't get to this last week because I got off on another little tangent like I do. And God just took me in a different direction. Um, but this is chapter 26. And if you all are wondering what this is, it's if you haven't watched the Angel series, The Chosen, there's three seasons. They're working on the fourth season now. This is the life of Jesus, but it's the life of Jesus through the eyes of his followers, his disciples, his mother, um, John the Baptist, uh, many of his apostles, sometimes people that he healed. Um, so I love this because when I think about 
you know, sometimes we all, we were just so fearful of, oh Lord, you know, when we're trying to pray the most perfect prayer and he just wants you to talk to him, right? He just wants you to see him for what he is and what he can be in your life. Um, you know, it amazes me when I run into people who say that, you know, they don't, they don't believe in God. Um, uh, thank you, Lion. I appreciate that. Um, who don't believe in God and you know, it's so funny. It's like, I just want to take them outside and just say, let's be still for a minute and let's, let's just look around at the skies and the sun and the moon and the stars and the birds and the grass and just so many things in life that I feel like because we've been here forever, we are just so used to God doing what he does every day, right? Um, you don't believe in God. How could you not? The birth of a baby. How could you not? When you see something happen, when, when, when somebody comes out of an accident that they shouldn't, how can you not? And then I think about the love. The unimaginable love that he had for all of us. And by the way, I've chosen to believe. I've chosen. Hi, Gwenda. I've chosen to to believe in, in, in what he did and him sending his son to die for us and to cover our sins. And that he is, you know, preparing a place for us um, in heaven so that. You know, this life, look, this this is just a temporary thing, guys. It's taken me forever to see that. This life here, this is temporary. But what he offers after this life, that's eternal. But in order to get there, he had to send his son. In order to get there, he had to die. In order to get there, he had to be raised again the third day. He beat death for us. I watched The Passion of Christ again on Sunday. And it was just, you know, it hits, it hits every time. It's one of those that you know it's going to happen. And I found myself covering my eyes when they were beating him, when they were whipping him. When they were tearing his flesh, I found myself jerking back when they were spitting in his face. When they pushed the crown of thorns into his head. When they mocked him. I saw the entitlement. I saw the fear of the Pharisees and the scribes thinking they wouldn't be as important. I watched him on the cross. I watched him... Listen as they as they cast lots right underneath his cross and, and and I watched as they laughed and they ridiculed and I watched his mother just I couldn't imagine. I looked at Lee and I said I could not imagine giving one of my two sons to have that happen to him and to have to sit there and watch it. I can't imagine somebody loving me or me loving somebody so much that I would give my son. It was in it was just unfathomable to me in that moment again that my sons are about the age of where Jesus was at the time. And when I think about my adult sons and, 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 and maybe knowing there was a journey coming and watching them take him and watch him carry a cross and I just, I was literally just so sad and anguished. But then at the same time, I thought, but he loved me that much. And even if you're somebody here and knows, Molly, I don't believe in Jesus. I mean, my religion doesn't. I'm an atheist. I'm this. He doesn't care what you call yourself. The love is so intense for you. 
that he still did it for you too. Here's the key up. He did it for you, but you have to accept him. You have to believe that he did that for you. You have to believe that Jesus gave his life to atone for your sins, knowing that you're going to keep sinning, knowing that you're human and there's no way you're going to be perfect, not even with salvation. You're not going to be perfect. And every day that I lay in my bed at night and I'm talking to him, Lee and I together, and I'm like, Lord, you know, forgive me for any sins that I may knowingly or unknowingly done today. Forgive me. And I realize that every day I fail him. And every day he says, you are forgiven, Molly. Go forth and do better. Go touch somebody's life, Molly. Go tell somebody else about my love and who I am. Because I don't want you to make your decision about God or Jesus. I, I don't want you to make your decision on, on him because of a church, because of a, a, a bad Christian, because of a bad experience in your life, because of a loss in your life. I want you to experience him, his word, what he is, what he was, what he will always be. I want you to know his love. And that is why I do this. Every time you catch this, whether you want to or not, every time somebody watches the YouTube, every time somebody catches the replay, I know, and especially those of you who are like, I don't know what she's talking about today. I don't want to hear this. This doesn't have to do with Avon. She's not being funny. She's not being this. She's not being that. There's a reason you keep hitting on my live streams and my videos because there's something here that he wants you to hear and he's not going to let you get away from me. So how about that? How about that? Something eventually is going to hit home. And if you're not sure about how to be sure, how to accept him, it's so easy. It's so easy. I, it's not, forget the rule book, guys. Cast the rule book out. The rule book comes as you choose him. And then he, he will tell you what he wants for your life. He is very clear about what he wants for you. But eternity... And knowing that you're going to be in heaven one day with me, that is the easiest thing because he already did the hard part. He already died for you. So I hope eventually that you will see that if you believe that, believe that Jesus did, he came down here. Guys, it's in the history books. This isn't some made up story. You realize that we judge time through Christ, A.D., B.C., before Christ. Come on. Come on. We, we look at time based on who he was. Do you think all this is a coincidence? It's not. It's not. But he is a gentleman, and he's not going to force you. He's not going to go, well, you're mine anyways, like it or not. You know, and I'm going to take you to heaven. No, it doesn't work that way. Because we have a very, we have a very courteous God and he does not drag you to the foot of the cross. He wants to know that you walk there on your own. He wants to know that you chose him. And I'm just here to let you know that if you're still breathing and you're still watching this, there's still time that you can choose him. So let's jump into the chosen real quick. We're going to do this one first, okay? This one's called Blind Eye, and this comes from Luke 6, 6 and 7. On another Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. 
And the scribes and the Pharisees watched Jesus to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath so that they might find a reason to accuse him. Back in the day, you didn't do that. You know, according to their law, you did not do anything on the Sabbath and you didn't heal. You didn't, you didn't work. You didn't do anything like this working on Sunday I'm doing. They would have done already clubbed me, stoned me, crucified me, right? But this is interesting. Listen, what a strange, legalistic, and impersonal world. The Pharisees were far more concerned about rules than people. Here was a man whose hand was withered, which means nerve damage, atrophy, a result of what we don't know. Regardless, he was missing the use of his hand in a day and age when manual labor was necessary to provide for oneself, not to mention a family. In short, his need was great and obvious to onlookers. Yet the religious leaders saw past him to Jesus, the object of their chagrin. This poor deformed man who had a name, a story, fear about the future, and probably hunger pains was just a pawn and a potential opportunity to trap the man derailing their world. And Jesus was derailing their world. Instead of waiting with bated breath to hear the Pharisees speak, people were now flocking to the man from Nazareth who continually bent the rules, which made him far more interesting and accessible to the people than the religious leaders ever were. He was unassuming and meek, yet authoritative and confident and articulate, all while doing things no one else could do, like healing ailments, driving out demons, and refusing to cower in the presence of the powerful scribes and Pharisees. So people flocked to him, and he didn't disappoint. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He could read their minds. And he said to the man with the withered hand, come and stand here. And he rose and stood there. You notice on that, Jesus said, come and stand here. The man didn't say why. He didn't ask permission. He didn't want to know. It says, and he rose and stood there. He did what he said. And Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to destroy it? And after looking around at them all, he said to him, stretch out your hand. And he did so. He didn't ask why. He didn't, he didn't look around. He didn't look for permission. And he did so. And his hand was restored. But the Pharisees were filled with fury and they discussed what they might do to Jesus. It's easy to find fault with the Pharisees. <clears throat> they really could be awful. And in a few words, Jesus publicly outed them for it. But lest we become just like them <clears throat> in self-righteousness and self-involvement, Consider how most of us are like them. Think about the homeless people we avoid making eye contact with as they hold cardboard signs near traffic lights. And the understaffed soup kitchens, under-attended mission trips, and underfunded relief organizations. Let's be honest, most of the time it's easier to ignore the need our hearts are in fact callous from exposure to so much of it. We often don't give needy people a second thought. Sometimes we feel annoyed and even put upon another person at another light, we think. Have you ever been guilty of that? You know. You don't really know that person's story, but you see him at the light. And immediately, you're dictating what the story is. He just wants it for alcohol. They just want it for drugs. They're just trying to get over on me. Oh, wow, here they are again. Why don't they just go get a job? Have you been there? 
<clears throat> Sometimes we feel annoyed and even put upon another person and another light. How much loose change am I expected to carry? And yes, like the Pharisees, we sometimes feel resentment towards those we accuse of trying to make us feel guilty. But like the man with the withered hand, they have names and stories. They have fears about the future and hunger pain. Never mind the possible reasons why their need is great. Their need is obvious. And like the Pharisees, we have much to learn from the Nazarene who never turned a blind eye. Thank you, God. Thank God he didn't turn a blind eye to us. Thank God he didn't turn his eyes from your need. Asking for prayer here. Can you imagine if Jesus was sitting in heaven right now? And all of us who are requesting prayer, me for my Emmy, you know, Tiff, who's, who's, uh, you know, who, whose daughter, uh, is, is going to be having procedures done. Think about this. Grandpa Bob's foot. Let's think about these things. Think about it. And what if God said, oh, wow, it's Molly again. It's Molly again. It's Tiffany again. Here she comes. There she is sitting on the corner on her knees with prayer. What if our God had that attitude? Think about it. It isn't any different that we come to him and he says to come to him. He says to do that. I get it. But what if he got tired of it? Repent. He didn't turn his eyes from your need. Repent of when you're behave. Repent when you're when you behave like a Pharisee, and ask him for the same heart for the needy as Christ had. Think about this. Think about this. I'm not telling you you need to give every dollar that you have to somebody on the street corner. And I am talking here too, to my Avon sisters and brothers. I don't know if you realize the blessing that we have as representatives. Think about this, that we are consistently looking for organizations that we can give to. And that is fabulous. That is what we should, you know, we get people to donate. We put these packets together and we will give them to, you know, homeless shelters or we will give them to abuse shelters and we do a calling. But let me ask you something. When is the last time that you took a packet from your money that has soap, lip balm, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, Maybe even an apple in a bag or a can of fruit with a plastic spoon. When is the last time that we had that? And we went out and when we saw people there, we gave them something that we have in our moment, in our space, in our ordering right now without judgment, without saying, well, I wonder if that person's a drug addict. Well, I wonder... I wonder if that person is an alcoholic. I wonder, why are you wondering this judgment, y'all? And I'm not just getting on you because I can remember when I was there. Oh, wow, that person, I guess it's just their corner. You don't know the story. Maybe the story is there's so much going on with them mentally that when they try to hold a job, the job gets rid of them because they're not very patient or because they weren't a good fit, whatever it is. I can't imagine anybody, anybody wanting to be on the street corner. I cannot imagine anybody wanting to hold a cardboard sign that says, need food. And the times that when it was possible... To just go get a McDonald's meal. I don't care if it's a happy meal. Tell them don't put the toy in. I get it. 
when does the opportunity become something real in your life to do something? It's so easy just to put money in the offering plate. Can I just say that? And I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But I believe that we were all called for a bigger purpose here. And I believe that when Jesus was was speaking on the mount and he was saying, blessed be those who are poor, blessed be those who are needy, blessed those who are sick, blessed our child. I believe that when he says that, I believe that he's talking to us. What are we doing? What are we doing? Or we should be doing less judging and more giving. I don't know what that looks like for you. I know many ways what it looks like for me. And I have been trying to really listen to God in the moment. Because this whole blind eye thing, we immediately want to judge people. I'm looking at all these kids who are out there and I know they're homeless. I know they left home. I know they did. And I am thinking to myself, what was going on at home that they felt it was better to be out there in the world sleeping underneath an overpass or 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 or, or under a tree somewhere or trying to find a place where nobody's going to beat them up or nobody's going to take what they have. I just wonder, what is it? What is it that happened at a home that drove them out? And I'm not saying it couldn't be them. I can't imagine but I see more and more of it here in North and North Carolina. I see more and more of it. And it makes my heart hurt. But I realize that those are the people that need us to stop judging and stop being a Pharisee and a scribe and acting like we know what their situation is. And maybe we just need to love them through it. Love them in the moment. I don't know if that means putting some some loose change or a couple of dollars in their pocket. I don't know if that means having uh, fresh fruit or something to give to them. I don't know if that means buying them a meal. Maybe it just means stop looking away from them and it look them in the eye and smile at them with love to let them know that you are not judging them for the circumstance that they are in right now. The one thing that I love my Avon business. I do. But I, I see people who can absolutely afford that all the time, every single week. And I love my customers dearly. But doing DoorDash has opened me up to a world that I realized I wasn't seeing a lot. Lee and I are out there at all times and we're on the same streets and we see the people and how they come and they go. And some people who are normally on corners that, that maybe we've talked to or we've been there for them, whatever that looks like. And then they're not there. And immediately I'm like, oh, wow, I wonder where he's at. I haven't seen him in a while. I hope he's okay. I don't, I can't help everybody, but I can be a light to anybody I come in contact with. And I think we all have that ability. I do. I think that we live in such a judgmental world that we are so busy trying to tell everybody what's right and what's wrong in this world that we forget in the midst of all that. We were only called to do thing, two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and to love others. And I don't remember him saying, figure out where their life is or if they're an alcoholic or a drug addict or, 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 or no matter what that or what their parents did to them. That's not our job. Our job is to love them. My heart sometimes breaks. I think it's Jesus working in me. 
that I will see kids just walking and all they have is the backpack. And you can tell they're not clean. You can tell, you can look in their eyes and they're just, they don't trust people. And I think, but they all came from a mama and a daddy. Where are they at? And I hope that if you do have a child that you are taking good care of. I hope that you are letting them know how much you love them, but how important it is to recognize the love that they have been given. Because some people, they just ain't got that. They've never experienced it. If you think I'm wrong, go look at the children's homes. Go look at the people. Go look at these kids who have no mom and dad because they've walked away or maybe they've died in drug use or a partner has killed them. And that is all they've seen. We are in a world that's full of that. But we are also in a world where whether you, whether you think you can or not, I'm here to tell you. You can make a difference. No, you don't have to take in every kid in the room. That's not what I'm telling you. That's not it. But do what you can. Be a welcome smile. Stop with the judgment. Quit looking away. Tell them that you're praying for them. If you can bless them with a dollar, bless them with a dollar. It's not up to you to know what they're doing with that dollar. God says to give with a generous heart. He doesn't say to give and know exactly where every dollar is going. I think it's where we all get messed up. God sees your heart and sees your actions. But he also sees what's going on in your mind. And I think we need to have more accountability ourselves to what we do in the moment. Moving forward, this says, obviously, we can't respond to every need. We just talked about that. But think of a time you could have, but you didn't. Why did you turn away? How would you handle it now if you got a second chance? Why did Jesus respond to needy people the way he did? What do you think he saw when he looked at them? I think he saw somebody who needed to know what unconditional love is. And that's where God comes in. List some ways that you could react to obvious needs in the future in addition to giving money. The answer is too easy. That was a good one. Now, the other thing I wanted to read you real quick, um, this is a great little devotional. Uh, my neighbor Chelsea gave it to me. It's called uh, Biscuits, Butter, and Blessings. Love this. Um, just really, sh really short devotionals, and they're all good, but some of them really hit. Um, this one, it says, sometimes the right word spoken at the right time fits just right into an empty place in your heart. And it's called apples of gold. <clears throat> in Proverbs 28, 11 and 12, it says a word spoken at the right time is like gold apples on a silver tray. A wise correction to a receptive ear is like a gold ring or an ornament of gold. Has somebody ever said the perfect thing to you at the perfect time? When you are going through an emotional time, when your heart is in distress, the right words can truly be precious to your troubled heart. The scripture above is derived from a lovely visual of golden fruit in a silver filigree or a lattice style basket, which reveals the contrasting golden color of the fruit inside. The truth, the fruit in the metal basket might be golden apples, oranges, pomegranates, citrons, apricots. The apples of gold are the fruit within the basket, and the basket is the setting of silver containing the fruit. 
The delicious fruit and the gleaming polished basket are truly lovely together. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the perfect fruit, appealing to our weary souls and spoken in the right season of our lives. This beautiful message is God's word, fittingly spoken, giving peace and redemption to weary, weary travelers who find no rest in this world. God's truth reveal, releases us from the chains of sin and cradles us in his grace. The apples of gold we share with others are scripture verses that set us free and calm our hearts, wrapped in a setting of silver, which is God's grace embracing us as we speak all humility and love. Now, let me tell you what I got from this when I read this this morning. Have you ever been in a place that, you, that you've never shared with anybody? Maybe it's just a moment place. Maybe it's been a couple of days. Maybe it's because of your health. Maybe it's because of something going you're going through with somebody. Maybe it's a deal with uh, uh, a kid. Who knows? But then somebody comes through. Maybe it's on social media. Um, maybe it's somebody sending you a text. Maybe it's somebody who has sent you a private message. Maybe it's a card in the mail. I don't know what that looks like for you. <clears throat> but have you ever just been in a place and you're like, oh my goodness, like somebody suddenly sends you something or you read something that you just thought, I know they weren't saying my name, but I swear that was meant for me. That is a golden apple. It is. Yesterday um, was not having a good day. My side was hurting yesterday, and I had you know, Lee and I went out and walked, and I knew we had Bible study, and I was preparing a meal for that. And out of the blue, out of the blue, I get a text, and I got a text from Tim Brown. Um, from those of you who know Tim Brown, if you know, you know, right? Um, and Tim sent me this picture that says, good morning, no matter where you are in life, no matter the circumstances, hold on to this truth. God loves you and you are not alone. God is our strength. Lean on him. Be encouraged in the Lord. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep believing. My response to Mr. Brown was, how did you know I needed that? <laughs> people use people in your lives. I believe this is where sometimes social media is great. I can't think of the many times that I have shared something that's happened in my life or what I'm feeling or what I've been through. And somebody will private message me or comment and say, oh my goodness, Molly, I, I really needed that. That just hits home for me. That's exactly where I'm at. Thank you for that. Now that works both ways. Sometimes when I'm feeling the need to share, sometimes it feels like I'm the only person going through what I'm going through or what I've been through. I, I'm the only person who's gone through it, right? Which is totally not true, but it feels that way. And what happens is, is when people respond and you realize I'm not alone, I'm not the only person who's gone through that. I believe in that moment, God has given you to me and maybe God has given me to you. There are many people, mostly family, who don't get what I do, who I am, why I do it. And I'm on board with them because I don't get sometimes who I am, what I do, or why I do it, <laughs> or what I share. All I can say is that I feel led. I fought with God on this Bible study. I did. I, I, I Sharing God because I didn't feel like I was knowledgeable enough. And I felt like I get it wrong so many times that I am not worthy to be followed in anything, not in business, not in life, not in where, where God's concerned, because I feel like I have failed in all of them. And last night in Bible study with our neighbors, we were going through um, Matthew, and it's 
not where Jesus fed the 5,000, but where he fed the 4,000 a little bit further. And everybody was talking, everybody was sharing, and I wasn't saying a lot. I was tired and I kept reading the passage over and over again. And it kept talking about um, that when they were talking about that the crowd was hungry and Jesus simply asked them, well, what, 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 what do you have? And they said, um, seven loaves and two fishes. And obviously that's not going to feed 4,000 men plus women and children. And, um, and when I kept reading the passage over and over again, what I found in this past passage is it wasn't just about the fishes and the loaves. To me, it kept speaking to me. I kept saying to myself, what God is saying is, what do you have? What do you have right now? What do you have? Do you have a message? Do you have a story? Do you have an opportunity? What do you have? And sometimes we feel like what we have is not worthy. It is not enough. And he said, I don't want you to wait until you have more. I want to take what you have right now, Molly Stonebib. And I want to use that today. Doesn't matter if it's too small or it appears too small. It doesn't matter if it's not the top of the line fish. It doesn't matter if the bread's a little bit stale, Molly. I want to take what you have right now and I want to use it. And Molly, if you let me do that, if you keep doing what you don't understand why you're doing it, then I'm going to be able to take that little bit, those little fishes and those loaves, and I am going to be able to help thousands. I am going to be able to use what you have to plant seeds in this world to let people know I am here for them that there is that there is love and sharing that there is knowledge and sharing and not just sharing the stuff when you hit the top not just sharing the top when you get the sharing sharing when you have the awards not just sharing when you have enough money and obviously, not just sharing when you feel like life is perfect. He said, I want you to take all that you have. And I just want you to offer it to me. So that I can use it. So if you think you're not in a place you can be used, you are. It's not God that's holding you back. It's not circumstances that are holding you back. It's you. You're letting your doubt. You're, you're letting the fact that you are thinking less of what God has made. It doesn't matter if you have broken bones. It doesn't matter if you, if you, if you don't feel like you wear the best clothes. It doesn't matter if you don't make the most money. Some of those people are the most unhappy people I've ever met in my life. It doesn't matter. What you have in this moment can be used. And most of the time, the experiences that I've come through are the ones that are most helpful to people. It's the weirdest thing. It's like I think, oh, I don't know if I want to share this story because I know how that's going to resonate and look look on me. People are going to think, seriously, Molly? And I'm like, seriously. And I realize all the struggles with my family. You know, a, 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 a failed marriage, problems with my kids, um, still issues in my life with people still that feeling of feeling unworthy and not loved because of decisions that I have made in my life that I know were better for me, but I still feel judged on it. I still feel like I have failed people because I made those decisions, right? But I knew they were God-led, but it doesn't help you feel and make you feel any better when you know that 
people don't like it. When I continue to push forward and I continue to share, those are the things that help people that say, I know I'm going through this divorce. I don't know where it's going to end up, but I know I'm going to be okay. But you still got to get through it. I know my kid is sick. I'm scared to death. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know I'm going to get through it. I don't understand why I'm struggling with cancer. I don't understand why my mom has dementia. I don't understand why this is happening in my world. I don't get it. You don't have to understand it. But even with all those feelings, even with everything that's going on, God gets it. And if you let him, he will walk with you through it. I'm not going to tell you you're going to like every outcome. That's not real life, y'all. If I was supposed to like the outcome, my mama would still be here. My mama would have been healed. If I was going to like the outcome, my daddy would have stepped up when my mom died. And he would have loved me and made me feel like the daughter I wished I had always felt like. If it was all good, I would feel like I never disappoint my family. If it was all good, my husband would not be going blind. If it was all going to be perfect, my dogs wouldn't have died, okay? Guys, life is going to be full of struggles and things we don't like. I wouldn't have gotten cancer at all. I'm so happy that God had that. We were, it was caught and I was healed. But I really wish I hadn't had to go through it at all, you know? But do you know how many people were touched and how I was touched and how I grew through that journey of cancer? Sometimes the, pe the people in your life who should be most supportive, the people who should ring out and say, I see what you're doing out there. And I think it's great. Do you know what happens? They can't see past themselves. That's not your responsibility. That's not your problem. See, the devil would love for those people, would love for those people to get in your head and stop you from your journey. And you know, he's not going to use the ones that you don't care about. He's going to use the ones you love. I need you to know that. I need you to hear that. It's not going to affect you as badly if the person that you don't care over there doesn't understand you, doesn't like you, doesn't like what you say, doesn't like your mission, doesn't like where you're going, doesn't like your decisions. But it's going to matter if the people who are close to you do not. It's going to matter if the people that are close to you are talking and running their mouths about you. And that's going to be, that's going to be who he uses because that's what's going to stop you if you let it. It's such a hard lesson. Don't give up on you. Because God hasn't. Don't think that your journey is insignificant. It's not. You're still here. Don't think because you've messed up that you can't be used now. Don't think that because you use drugs or you have an alcohol problem or, or, or you know, oh, oh, well, Molly, I'm too fat or, or Molly, I got a divorce or Molly, I yelled at my kids or I did this. Let me tell you, he can use anything he can use it he can use it sometimes the worst things that have happened in my life the biggest brokenness in my life and there's so many there's so many they have bought the biggest growth patterns in me. And later on in life, they've bought the biggest blessings. See, what happens is 
weird creatures of wanting the here and the now. Okay, God, if you're going to use this, show me right now. I want to know how you're going to use it. Could you show me the outcome? Because if you show me, God, if you show me, then I know I can just get through this. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. No, no, no. Your growth is going to come in the struggle. And if you're like, Molly, I don't understand. I'm watching these people over here. They never have any struggles. No, they, they don't have any struggles that you know about. They're probably a whole lot better at hiding it than I am. They have struggles. I realize that sometimes when people are unhappy, what they hate seeing is people who are happy or they are working through their unhappiness or they won't settle. They won't settle for feeling how they're feeling. Have you ever known people that no matter if life is good, they find something to complain about. If life is bad, they find something to complain about. If life is in the middle, there's something else happening. They're never happy. There's something missing in the middle. And most of the time what they're missing is what that experience, good, bad, indifferent, or in the middle, what it can show them. They're so busy complaining about what isn't good or how rough life is on them that they don't realize the blessing is there. God has it all lined up if they'll just keep going. Take a moment. Man, if, if you've pushed God out of your life, I'm giving you the invitation, and God is too, to welcome him back in. Maybe you were like me, and for years, I just pushed him away. Oh, he would only go so far, I'm pretty sure, but the point is, I pushed him out. I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to do enough in my life to drive him away. And then one day he got my attention. And I realized that I was letting bad experiences, bad churches, bad Christians, bad marriages, bad experiences with my kids, bad relationships with other people, things in my family, whatever it was, I was letting them rob me of a good God. Because God never promised easy, but he did promise that if I walk with him, if I bring him into every moment from now until the day that I draw my last breath, that the greatest thing is when I draw that last breath, he's going to be right there with open arms. And all those people who are up there, they got it a whole lot better than us, for sure. Maybe I'm just here to say, maybe it's time to give him another chance. Maybe you feel like you do have everything you want, but you still feel empty. Where does God fit in that? Not your church, not religion. Where does God fit in with all that? He is the peace that passes all understanding. He is there. He is waiting. And I hope that you'll let go of all that has happened and you will accept what is right in front of you. Then he's going to lead you to those people. You're going to be able to look them in the eye. You're going to be able to do what you can do for that homeless person holding the sign. It's not about screaming what you do to everybody else. Nobody needs that. It's about in that moment, we should be treating those people the way we treat the people who seem to have it all together, but yet you wonder, those people who seem to have it all together, do they really? Or are they just hiding it well? Because that used to be me. Thank you guys for sticking with me through this. Again, I never quite know what God's going to give me until he does. But he keeps telling me to get up every Tuesday and do this. And he keeps giving me the things to share and bringing memories back about different places I've been in my life. Maybe you're watching this on YouTube. Maybe the replay. 
right now we're live <laughs> but I hope somewhere in all the groups that I share this in I need you to know stop stop letting people and things rob you of a God who is waiting with open arms to help you through everything that you've ever experienced, good, bad, or indifferent. You're still here. Thank him for that. Because he's the only one who sees that there's a reason for you still to be here. I love you guys. I will be praying over the prayer request today. I hope everybody will pray for everybody's prayer request. Let's pray for each other. Pray for me. Pray for our niece. Ah. Pray that whatever is broken in your life, that God will see you through it. You might be praying for a fix and the fix may come, but sometimes God removes things from our lives for a reason. We may never know till we get to heaven, but I know one thing, it's a whole lot easier with him. Love you guys. Talk to you next Tuesday.